What's up? This is Corporal Crowley on Hooker's Push. If you've ever played Union here and spawned at main deployment, you'll know it takes about three minutes to run through this plowed field, through Miller's cornfield, and into anywhere where you can be at all remotely useful. Um, so, uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how they do the maps. Uh, why it is the way it is, and maybe, maybe give people a little bit of context as to actually what they're doing, because it can feel, you know, like you're a little bit constricted with the uh, the desertion boundaries here. Don't think of it as deserting. Just think of if you cross that red line, you're going into another fight that is just as crazy, and you're gonna you're gonna just get killed by a cannon or a bullet. Think of it that way. Uh, because this is a huge battle. Uh, 2,300 uh, dead missing and uh, wounded. I think something like 15,000 dead on uh, uh, the total, both sides. But what was actually going on? So we're in Maryland, a northern state. Uh, you know, some pro-Southern sympathy, sympathies, a slave state, a border state, but surrounding D.C. so strategically important, the Union couldn't let it fall. Uh, 1862, Lee, uh, Lee's in, in Maryland uh, in the late fall looking for supplies and looking for support, and here we are. Um, <coughs> Miller's Cornfield, perhaps the most famous uh, part of the battlefield. Uh, we're on a hooker's push here because this was first contact in the morning. The Union troops are pushing south, um, and they're going through the cornfield. This is, you'll see Hagerstown Turnpike down there. If you look even further, you can just make out Dunker Church in the center of the frame there. Smoketown Road going off to the uh, east from Hagerstown Pern Turnpike to Burning Mama Farm there. And if you look uh, even further in the distance, you can just make out uh, that group of buildings over there. That's Piper Farm. Uh, so with bloody lanes down there as well to the southeast. Um, we've got Nicodemus Hill. And we've got, this is the Miller Farm here. This is where you spawn on, on Nicodemus Hill. And then, can't really see it from here, but somewhere off in the distance there is Roulette Lane. We'll, uh, we'll find it as we go. Anyway, that's a good time to hop out into the big view and just talk a little bit about what's going on. So you see here, when we first started the first New Jersey um, server, we had the crazy idea of doing some like photogrammetry of the entire map and trying to get like a 3D model of the terrain. Uh, it turned out to not work out fantastically well. Harper's Graveyard was about the only one that worked at the at all because it's one of the smaller ones. Um, I mean, you go back and try it since they raised the ceiling on everything uh, in spectator mode, but I haven't, haven't actually done it. We'll see. So I've, I've roughly laid all of the different skirmish areas in the Antietam uh, on top of each other here. Um, and I say that because as we were up in the air just now, you can see they built out eh, pretty much this entire area. Now, whether or not it's loading one small area for this, and one small area for this, and one small area for this, I'm not sure. It's, it's likely, I'm sure they're saving memory that way. But, you know, if you look at, if you look at um, this area here where the really hot, heavy fighting is, most of the maps are all occurring right here. So uh, where we just were here, this is the hooker's push map. Well, let's just back up a little bit further here. <sighs> Evening Eastwoods is actually September 16th, the night before. The Union Army meets the rebels from the north and the east. They're coming in this way. Uh, I, I particularly like this map. The, it, doesn't, it doesn't zoom in or out very well. So we've got a couple different areas here. You've got Antietam. You'll notice if you're on an Antietam server, it's always Antietam. If you're on a Harpers Ferry, it's always Harpers Ferry. If you're on South Mountain, it's always South Mountain because the, they've built out these gigantic maps and then they're just drawing boundaries around them here. Uh, so this is actually South Mountain here. And uh, what happened? So 1862. Summer and spring of 1862, the Peninsula Campaign has McClellan 
taking most of his army down here. And uh, sieging forts very slowly, advancing huge numbers, basically fell for the like fake log cannon straw man trick. Thought he was terribly outnumbered, wired for reinforcements. Could have ended it there and then, but uh, classic McClellan. Uh, the Rebs go back in, uh, fortify Richmond. Uh, that whole time that's happening in Shenandoah Valley here, uh, Jackson is just laying waste to everybody. <sighs> very, very strategic place. Uh, a lot of agriculture for, you know, the South supporting everybody, but they're running out of food. Um, October, sorry, August 30th here. You've got <clears throat> second bull run. Uh, Second Manassas, as you'll call it. Uh, CSA wins again and decide to capitalize on that victory as the Union is falling back to guard Washington. They come up and invade Maryland to try and garner support and to, <laughs> you know refill refill their larders. They're out of food, so they're they're trying to they're trying to get food. Uh, so they raid the north. Uh, you see South Mountain here natural fortifications protecting uh, that position from the east and Harpers Ferry, uh, you know, strategic confluence of the Shenandoah and Potomac. You've got West Virginia on the, the west side of that. You've got Maryland on the north of Potomac. You've got Virginia to the south of the Potomac and east of Shenandoah. But, you know, federal, federal armory famously raided by John Brown. Uh, you know, huge, huge ordnance stores. And the CSA bombards that, takes it over. Um, a lot of that, a lot of that fighting in the game is is a fictional scenario because it really was, you know, artillery bombardment. But so Jackson's down there. He's not. He's not really in a position to be an immediate support in Antietam. South Mountain uh, slows slows the Union down. But basically, the Union got lucky. And they found some couriers with some battle plans and, and knew knew to coalesce on Sharpsburg. So that all happens on the morning of, well, the evening of six, September 16th, we get evening evening at Eastwoods, but then uh, we start at Hooker's Bush in the morning uh, as the U.S. Uh, federal troops are coming from the south, or coming down from the north to the south uh, in the east and converging on Antietam, on, uh, on just north of Sharpsburg. So chronology. I haven't written the times down on this. And another thing to remember is a lot of this is happening concurrently. So you'll get these you'll get these attack counterattack sequences and then you'll sort of move over to another place geographically and 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 so on and so forth. So um, yeah we start here at the East Woods. You see they're coming down from the north and we just meet just meet a little bit of a <sighs> A little bit of resistance coming in, but you know it wasn't very common to fight at night. Uh, you know, for good reason. Rest in pieces, uh, Stonewall Jackson. Uh, that's what you get. Uh, <laughs> you just don't. You just don't do it without NVGs, I guess. So, everybody takes a nap, get a good get a good rest, wake up the next morning bright and early, and we get right to it. So, this hooker push map, by far the largest area and and so narrow uh so you're running you're running you're running you're running you're running it turns out you ran too damn far uh not quite you do get through there uh, if you win that if you win that strategic point in the field it doesn't really feel like you're doing anything because you're just taking this point in the field but you have to remember the next thing that happens is you're on hagerstown turnpike right here and the U.S. is coming back, and they're taking the field. And this is the West Woods right here, the northern part of the West Woods. But <clears throat> counterattack number one, they get driven back, and just a slaughter in the cornfield. I think I think we've all been there. And then at or around the same time, I'm I'm not quite sure. Uh, we've got. You know, more to the left flank uh, as the as the Federals pull pull south. You've got this fight in the East Woods uh, to secure that flank. Uh, but at the same time, this is going on. Everybody on your team is 
getting absolutely shelled by artillery positions on Nicodemus Hill, which is the high point of the whole battleground, and they've got views on this entire advance here. So this right flank has to deal with the cannons up there, and that is never easy uh, for anybody, right? Not fun. <coughs> We're going to go to Bloody Lane down here. It's a little bit further south. <sighs> so even further on the left flank here. Where is Eastwoods? Yeah, that's right. Oh, we're looking at the counterattack under there. So uh, yeah, so here we are more on the left flank. And you'll, you'll see that this, this flank maintains itself throughout each map. It's just kind of on the course of the day. Uh, it goes back and forth depending on, on where you are. But that's the main push. You've got this this northeast to southwest push to, uh, you know, attack and destroy the invading rebel army. Uh, Bloody Lane, notoriously costly. Uh, this little sunken road right here, skirmish for sunken road. Uh, you see, this all this all connects. If only we could just take a horse around there. But this is, this is the same as Roulette Lane here. Uh, not sure. Not sure of the chronology there. We'll have to go back and check that out. But if we turn that off, it's the same thing. So it's actually kind of an interesting question. I have to have to look into the um, chronology there because I, I guess that counterattack with that loop around. I don't know. No. I'm gonna have to go back and get a history degree, but thanks for thanks for sticking with me. So, uh, you know, I'm just trying to inspire you all to do your own research. I've been to Antietam. I own a couple books, uh, but you know, I'm getting old. Can't remember everything. Uh, <clears throat> so we're gonna skip the Pry Ford stuff right now, uh, just because we're already zoomed in here. Uh, like we said before, this is the West Woods here. Uh, that uh, obviously a valuable position to protect uh, the rebel left flank as they're holding up in that church, and they've got batteries here as well. And you've got to, you know, also protect your artillery. Dunker Church, the classic, right here. This is this is sort of the main thrust of the center. Uh, it has a very strategic position as you come down Smoke Down Road to. Hagerstown Turnpike, you've got this church right here. Uh, skip Burnsides again. We'll go. B we'll go back to those. Um, then you see Cooks right here. So Cooks and Cooks and Dunker, very very similar um, in terms of the actual. Oh, I did the wrong one. My bad. Hold on. Bear with me. Uh, so you see the uh, actual skirmish area has got. Quite a lot of overlap. They're not not the same, but you know, there's so much in common here. So, and that's kind of the point of this: is you'll recognize different parts of terrain here, and you can you can use the same same places over and over again. Uh, but you know, in some in some places, you will feel like you won't have a lot of agency, like this part here. Why can't why can't we go further right on this flank to defend ourselves? And you know how come they how come they have this line uh, directly on our spawn? And you know this map uh, is very very easy. Cook's counter charge to get the uh, Union artillery overrun. It's notoriously hard to defend there. So and that's part of the part of what's going on in that map is you know you've got to withdraw your artillery uh, and the infantry's got to come up to do that. And you're, you're just buying time uh, until you can regroup your forces and push back again. So you're just in a scenario and you're, you're, living, that, you're living that as close as you can, but it's never going to be uh, exactly what you uh, want unless we've got, you know, a 30,000 seat server uh, with, you know, horses and gigantic map. Uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, maybe with Pied Piper uh, technology, which brings us to Piper Farm, uh, to the southern end of Hagerstown Turnpike. Okay, this looks like it got maybe a little bit uh, off scale somehow, but um, 
here we are. So yeah, you'll see uh, this is this is basically where the CSA's headquarters are. You'll you'll see that uh, national stars and bars flag on a pole as if you're in the training grounds uh, from a lot of different angles, and that's that's right here. This is you know artillery in the orchard, and, uh, again the sunken lane. So as you're going through. Uh, as you're going through, uh, the spawn, the union spawn, oh, that's not what I meant to do, excuse me. As you're going through the union spawn here, uh, you're crossing this, this bloody lane here, uh, and you'll see all the dead bodies, and uh, you say, oh yeah, what's that from? Well, then you pass this corn and you go in the orchard, and you can see all that, you can see all that from uh, the bloody lane thing. If you're on top of the hill, on the bloody lane map right here in this position, you look you look down to this field, you can see this, so the art, it's not showing up on this map here, but the rebel artillery is in that orchard. Uh, it's in the same exact position and they're, and they're shooting up there. So then this is just a continuation of the bloody lane takes us to Piper Farm. We're fighting, fighting up to take out that artillery position. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, one thing after another, you know. Sounded like it sounded like a busy day. Uh, glad I wasn't there in person, but it's it's a lot of fun to go back and see it this way. And I I, I hope you all enjoy uh, again a little bit of context here. I, I know it's a little bit dry. Uh, hopefully, we'll make this into something that's a little bit a little bit easy, more easily digestible. If you have any ideas on on what format that should take, uh, I'm all ears here. Uh, but you see Hills, Hills Counter uh, here, this is towards the end of the day, um, you know, far left Union flank, right CSA flank, and we're fighting over this, this hay field here. But it's just all, it's all a continuation. Uh, you know, there's the bloody lane right here, it leads right down here, roulette, uh, roulette lane and that farm here, so we're just, we're just fighting southwest, driving, driving all these people out. Um, I guess we'll go back to Pry Ford here, all these Pry houses. So this is <coughs> a slightly different area here. Nope, that's not what we want to do. <laughs> haven't done haven't done Photoshop in a while. Very very bad at this. All right, so uh, these did not these did not uh, line up as well as the others did. I don't know if. It's a rotational thing. Uh, maybe the creek is moved. So the scale on this is a little bit off. The rotation's a little bit off. Uh, we'll show you just just how off it is there. Uh, but this is the Shepherdstown Pike here. So I've lined up Shepherdstown Pike. Uh, this is the Pry House part of the park. You can see all the current park boundaries in green here. Uh, this looks like how the Pry House Road should be, but. Uh, when you match it up with Shepherdstown Pike, uh, it seems like they've moved some stuff, which I wouldn't put past. You know, the, it's not unheard of to move a building wholesale. And, you know, a lot of this, a lot of this parkland, they do pay. Pe people still operate farms here. They do pay them to to grow the same crops and keep the same boundaries. But not everything has stayed the same. And uh, it's tough to say. And I, I don't know what maps the devs have, have based it off of again. But uh, so this is this is the. Northern River Crossing here, uh, as as the Federals are moving from South Mountain to engage in uh, the environs of Jarsburg, they have to cross the uh, Antietam Creek here. So this is the Pry Ford map. Uh, is this first one here? You'll see you're crossing you're crossing the river here uh, to move in here. Pry Mill. Uh, Sort of a weird one. It always feels kind of maybe a little bit disconnected to some of you. What's going on, really? Uh, well, that is you're just protecting you're protecting your flank so that uh, you can cross the army over the fort. And that's that's what's going on there. So there's this position here and uh, sparsely defended. I I take it, but you know enough that we've just got this small minor engagement, but just to just to cover your ass as you cross the river and secure that secure that crossing. House. I'm not sure what kind of fighting actually happened here. I know it was a field hospital. Uh, really interesting map with that uh, with that road. 
but a very awkward boundary. And it, you know, when you look at it in context with everything that I've said before of, you know, oh, well, you've just got these sort of crisscrossing things and everything that's on either side of you, you've got to think of it as, you know, uh, hell, hellscape on either side. There's just like instant death. It doesn't necessarily make a ton of sense here, that being a field hospital. And this one, I'm also confused how, how the ribs are attacking from the south. Doesn't make a ton of sense. Uh, I might have laid that one out incorrectly. Uh, we'll go back to that uh, with the historical books and check it out. And we'll go back to Burnside's Brits here. So going back in time a little bit, I think this was this was between you know ten started at maybe ten, maybe took him a couple hours to get across. Burnside had thousands of troops here trying to cross this bridge. Pretty costly. Uh, rebels are on this this bluff up above with a clear shot uh, of the bridge, and it just just uh, kind of not all that surprising to learn that when McClellan lost his job after Antietam and they put Burnside's in charge, his his short tenure ended at Fredericksburg, just throwing one slow wave after another at a stone wall. Uh, it was pretty heavily defended, so. Uh, yeah, what are you going to do? Um, I don't know. So you see just above uh, Burnside's Bridge, as you cross here, you've got the Otto Sherrick Farm. So this is another uh, another part of that advance as, as Burnside's troops cross, and they're trying to go north, secure Sharpsburg, and hit the rebel right flank. Uh, from the south, uh, they have to advance north. It's, uh, it's very much the same uh, system on South Mountain and the and, uh, the Harpers Ferry maps is just you know smaller smaller maps, fewer boundaries. Antietam is is by far the the focus uh, and the largest of them. But it's all connected, and you're just you're just playing the day out in a sequence. You've got, you know, you've got some some parts of it uh, that you've got control over, you know. But it's like any historical. Like if you're going to play if you're going to play a D-Day, you know, battle, then you know, you're operating under a certain uh, certain scenario, and you can change it to a certain extent. But mostly, you're just playing out something that already happened. Um, and obviously, it's it's tough uh, with this scale of this map to to do it with 150 people. 75 versus 75 uh, is just a drop in the bucket of who actually participated in Antietam. Just huge numbers of people. So there's not a lot you can do to uh, replicate that without some restrictions. And you just sort of see just how much overlap there is here, this back and forth as you go. Um, you know, alpha, 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 alpha. This is, this is where it all happened. <sighs> if they had, you know, some, some kind of a ambient uh, battle scape going on uh, in the background beyond just uh, cannon fire, uh, that, might, that might help a little bit, but for... <laughs> For what they made with such a small team, it's really, really impressive. Uh, uh, beautifully done, and I love South Mountain. reminds me uh, reminds me of growing up in this area. The granite, uh, the lichen on the granite, the underbrush, the sycamores, nailed it. Well done, well done. And I'll see you on the battlefield if you're looking for anybody to fight with. Uh, hit us up at the First New Jersey. We'd love to have you.